Last I checked, the housing market is still going crazy. So let me take you on a tour of my house and show you how I packed a mansion's worth of features into 2,000 square feet using automation, motorization, and some good old fashioned creative use of space. Starting out in my favorite place, the garage. I do a lot of DIY projects and I have accumulated quite a few tools over the years, so I needed an efficient way to store all of my tools and maximize my building spaces without permanently taking up room in the garage. Using kits designed for standing desks, I built these two motorized adjustable height workbenches, which not only enables me to store them out of the way when they're not in use, but it also lets me easily, quickly, and reliably set them up for a long outfeed table saw, a perfectly level miter saw station, and a base for my CNC machine that I have lifted to the ceiling using a manual garage storage hoist from Amazon. When the garage is in workshop mode, I have an extra bank of Barina LED shop lights connected to a spark plug that makes the space super bright and evenly lit. But the garage isn't just for working. My newest addition is this full-size DIY golf simulator. Three motorized hoists raise and lower the impact screen, netting, and hitting mat, letting me transition from a two-car garage into playing my favorite golf course in less than five minutes without any heavy lifting, ladders, or tools. Along with this project, I added LED strip lighting and air conditioning to make the space feel less like a garage and more like a fun place to hang out. And I built a fold down Murphy bar safely outside the hitting area for when my friends come over to play. I only use the simulator a few nights a week, so it's great to be able to fold it all the way back up into the ceiling and not waste this entire space when I'm not using it. Before we get into the smart features of the garage, I'd like to thank Govi for sponsoring this house tour. Govi just released their first matter certified LED strip, the M1. In typical Govi fashion, the M1 strip includes everything you need for a painless install right in the box. And the M1 has an LED density of 60 LEDs per meter, which is perfect for creating a spot-free look without too much energy consumption. Because the M1 strip is matter certified, you can add it directly to any matter border router to enable 100% local, cloud-free control of your M1 strip, which means lightning fast response times and no loss of functionality if the internet goes down. Check out the matter certified Govi M1 strip using the link down in the description. As for the smart features in the garage, this is a really common hack that I use in a bunch of different places in my house. I replaced a single light switch with a three switch unit from ZemiSmart. But like I said, the garage was only wired for a single light circuit. So these other two buttons are just virtually tied to smart plugs using simple automations. When I press the bottom button, it turns on a smart plug connected to the extra shop lights in the back. And when I press the middle button, it runs an automation that turns on all the golf simulator lights. The middle button is also tied to a smart plug that turns off the power to the garage door opener whenever the golf simulator lights are on. Because if someone were to accidentally open the garage door with the simulator screen down, it would end very poorly for everything involved. Heading inside, we've got another multi-purpose room that acts as my wife's office, storage for all of my daughter's toys and projects, and when needed, a guest room. According to the floor plan for my house, this was designated as a guest bedroom, and it was completely sectioned off from the rest of the first floor. But I thought it was crazy to waste 20% of my main floor on a room that would only be used a few days a year. So I cut out a large section of this non-load bearing wall and installed double doors that open up the floor plan. Then using a kit from Create-A-Bed, I built a queen size Murphy bed for the few weeks a year that we actually do have guests. Since this is a guest room sometimes, there are less automated things in here than other rooms. But I do still have this simple blinds motor that opens and closes the blinds at sunrise and sunset. And I opted for this solution instead of my DIY blinds motors because it's easier for guests to understand how to use it because it's got clearly labeled buttons on the motor. There's also a contact sensor on the Murphy bed that automatically activates guest mode in Home Assistant that disables the scheduled opening and closing of the blinds and turns off the robotic vacuums which normally run downstairs at night while we're asleep. The built-in also has a spot for my wife's computer and it's complete with an extendable desk section for doing paperwork or it can be stowed away when we have guests. There was also no reason that a guest room needed to have a closet, so I built some custom shelves designed to fit these specific storage containers for things like random wires, power-related wires, and of course, more LED strips than anyone could ever use. Moving into the living room, which is where we spend most of our time, we've got my daughter's desk, my desk, and our main sitting area and TV space. 90% of the time we watch TV on the 65 inch OLED, but when it's time for a movie or a big game, an Amazon Echo command automatically dims the 12 volt RGBW addressable LEDs behind the screen, turns off the lamps, raises the 100 inch projector screen and pulls out the motorized shelf for the ultra short throw projector. Since the projector and screen are usually stowed away but extend the exact same location every time, the projector is always perfectly lined up to the screen without needing to worry about additional setup or keystone, which makes it super convenient to use even if it's just for an hour or two on a weeknight. 
We've got a Sonos Arc soundbar, a Sonos Sub, and two Sonos One SLs that provide great surround sound for their size and ease of installation, giving us an awesome home theater experience when we want it without having to dedicate an entire separate room to it. And with Sonos, there's also the added benefit of whole home audio. At my desk, I've got a custom set of buttons that control things like my foot warmer, desk LEDs, and the automatic lock for the patio door. And behind my monitor, I've got another one of those three button Zenni Smart switches. And this one controls two physical circuits for the spotlight and ambient light, and one virtual circuit for the lamps and LEDs behind the TV. Holding down the bottom button on the Zemi Smart Switch also activates my favorite automation, which is a bedtime routine that turns off the TV and all the downstairs lights, locks the patio door, checks to make sure the garage door is closed and the mini split AC is off, closes the blinds and curtains in the master bedroom, and activates the house alarm. Moving into the kitchen, which doesn't have a whole lot of smart products except for a Google Home Hub, which we mostly use as a voice activated kitchen timer and a digital picture frame, which we love. Google Photos can automatically sync with your phone's camera roll, which not only provides an easy way to back up your photos, but you can also use Google's facial recognition to display only pictures that have certain friends or family in them. In the pantry, I made this built-in set of shelves with white LEDs controlled by a Shelly RGBW2. And not only do the four different channels on the RGBW2 allow me to adjust the brightness for different parts of the shelves individually, but it also made it simple to tie it to an automation using a ring motion sensor so that when you walk into the pantry, the lights get brighter, and then after a minute of no movement, they'll dim back down to 10% brightness. We've also got a cocktail machine in here, which I guess is sort of a smart home product, and this one is the Bev by Black & Decker. We had the Bartesian for a couple of years and we upgraded the Bev because I liked the design with the actual liquor bottles and of course the LEDs. And it's also super nice that it uses the same mixer pods as the original Bartesian, which now lives in that Golf Simulator Murphy bar. Cocktail machines are marginally nice to have around normally, but they're perfect for having company over because it gives them the freedom to make whatever their favorite drink is without needing to stock a full bar of mixers and specialty liqueurs. Outside on the patio, we've got a 15 foot concrete and epoxy bar with seating for eight, and then outdoor lounge furniture under a motorized pergola. I ordered this pergola straight from a Chinese factory called Alunatec two years ago, and I have been really impressed with its build quality and performance, and it does a great job of keeping the area under the pergola completely dry when closed while allowing the sunlight and breeze through when we want it. Both the pergola and ceiling fan came with an RF433 remote control, so I use a Sonoff RF bridge to control them with Amazon Echo commands through Home Assistant. On the bar and grill side of the patio, I've still got my existing motorized shades that I built almost six years ago, and amazingly, they are still going strong in the Florida rain and humidity. On the pergola, I went with a multi-purpose shade that could act as a shade and a projector screen, and I made a video about making a DIY screen out of Flex Seal. Unfortunately, that project didn't last, and the Flex Seal ended up peeling away from the screen material. The most ridiculous thing, though, is I was able to replace it with actual outdoor screen material from a site called Carl's Place in the exact size that I needed for less money that I spent on the Flex Seal for the original project. I used the Dang Bay Mars Pro projector on the patio, which has plenty of brightness for watching TV and playing Xbox under the pergola the vast majority of the time, except for the three hours between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. when the sun creeps through the space in between the pergola and the top of the screen. Another home automation project that has stood the test of time was my pool automation, which was actually my second project after automating my garage door. Six years later, the Node MCU is still going strong and lets me control and monitor my pool and hot tub via Home Assistant and Amazon Echo commands. Heading upstairs into the other multi-purpose spare bedroom, sometimes we call this the studio, other times we call it the exercise room, but it's even more than that. Starting with the studio stuff, this is where I record the talking head portions of my video. And I've got a pull down green screen and a camera and lighting rig on rails. This setup was actually designed for people who live in high rise condos to be able to hang their clothes on their balconies, but it works perfectly for mounting my studio lights and camera, and it lets me set up for recording in less than a minute and stores mostly out of the way when it's not in use. This is also where I keep all of my testing gear for security cameras, LED strips, and projectors, where my Home Assistant server and Synology NAS live, and I've got a little makerspace area with a vinyl cutter, a 3D printer, and just a normal laser printer. When I'm not recording, this room gets daily use as a home gym with a large yoga mat type flooring, a fold away walking treadmill, and the Tonal Home Gym, which is probably one of the coolest inventions of the last five years, but the company is trying to set some record for anti-consumer behaviors by giving it a huge initial purchase price, tying all of its functionality to a monthly subscription, randomly raising those subscription costs, not selling replacement parts, and perhaps the most ridiculous thing, full cloud reliance to the point where you can't even turn on the weights if there is an internet outage. 
In a pinch, this room also functions as a guest bedroom, since most of our guests also have their kids with them these days. In here, I used Create-A-Bed horizontal twin-size kits, but I stacked them on top of each other to make Murphy bunk beds, which like all bunk beds are a real pain to get the sheets onto, but are always a huge hit with the kids. This is also where I test projectors, so I've got a 100-inch projector screen and a motorized blind that blocks out all the light in the room. In the master bedroom, there were zero lights installed when we moved in and a single switched outlet for bedside lamps. So using a Shelly 2.5, I virtually connected that single switch to our bedside lamps, the RGBW LED strips above the curtain valence, and these Govi RGBW lamps so that one flip of the switch turns on all the lights. Behind this valence, I've got a Zemi-Smart motorized curtain track and three of my DIY blinds motors so that with a single Amazon Echo command, we can open or close the curtains and three window blinds simultaneously. I originally had the whole Govi immersion system installed on our bedroom TV, but a year ago we replaced that 50 inch TV with a 100 inch projector screen and I recently upgraded the ceiling mounted projector from the XGMU Horizon Pro to the 4Movie X5. We also have the 8 Sleep Smart Mattress, which is another absolutely incredible invention with terrible implementation. The 8 Sleep uses water channels and sensors to adjust your bed temperature based on your sleep stage, and honestly it changed me from a terrible sleeper who would get up 3 to 4 times a night, to someone who lays in bed and falls asleep almost instantly and doesn't wake up until the morning. Unfortunately, for some reason, 8sleep decided to make this relatively simple product 100% cloud-based, so that if the internet goes down, the heating and cooling unit won't even turn on, which doesn't make any sense to me and it makes it really hard for me to give it a full recommendation. But there are quite a few things in my house that I would wholeheartedly recommend to anyone, and almost everything that you've seen today has a corresponding video on my channel. So if you're interested in a more in-depth look at a project or a product, I've linked all those videos in the description organized by room. I've also got Amazon links to some of my favorite things from this video and I do appreciate when you use those links because as an Amazon affiliate I do earn a small commission on those sales at no cost to you. I'd also like to thank all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for their continued support of my channel and if you're interested in supporting my channel please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing and as always thanks for watching the hookup.